name is Eric Pagan, also known as Three Knees Down, and I'm training to be a Moto America racer. I think a lot of people who aren't in the sport look at motorcycle riders as having a death wish. I don't have a death wish. I don't want to die. But I want to be able to get close to death within my own abilities. I chose to do motorcycles because of the high risk. You know, I am a very competitive person by nature, but I also want to test my own abilities and my own strengths. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, for me, is to get on a motorcycle, go into a corner as fast as I can, as low as I can, drag my knee, drag my elbow, drag the pegs, you know, whatever it takes to just even gain uh, a tenth of a second, right, through those lap times. It's, it's really what drives me to ride motorcycles um, on and off the street. So trying to obtain a professional level at my age, I'm 31 years old right now, it seems unheard of, right? We, we don't hear about a lot of guys, especially that are older, you know, past 20 years old, becoming a professional rider. And I kind of want to break that for a lot of people. I'm hoping that I can get to the professional level, even if I'm not at the top, you know, of the grid. I want to be able to say, hey, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you try to do it, as long as you could push through it, age doesn't matter. It's just your own skills and your own abilities. I've been riding for about nine years. Um, got my first taste of being on a two-wheeled vehicle in around 2010, uh, but I didn't actually hit the track until around 2011, 2012. My history with bikes and motorsports really stems back from childhood. Uh, the entire dream that I had originally was to become a rally racer, but I grew up in the Bronx, New York, and I didn't exactly have any income to go hop into a car and go race. So uh, once college came around, I started looking for means of transportation and I came across a moped and I was, I fell in love. I, I went to moped rallies. I met up with a bunch of different people um, all over the States and they had uh, what's called a Motobacan moped. So it's a 1979 Motobacan and that really is what open this gateway for motorcycles and racing for me. So I started importing parts, um, building my own race bike. I started a little racing league out in New York, uh, Lafayette, New York, at a track called Cherry Valley. You know, at the time it was only 50cc two strokes, but uh, that eventually snowballed up its way to uh, Yamaha R3. I want to see if I can make something of myself in terms of racing. So went out to Chuckwalla, CVMA, got my license and just hit the track as much as I could. During that time, my fiance was getting her degree for physician assistant. So I took a hiatus and helped her out with that because at the end of the day, no matter what I do for racing, it's not as important as your career and what you do with that. So I wanted to support her I took time off then to support her through that. We moved around a little bit, traveled, and um, eventually I found that maybe I, I didn't want to do racing so much. Um, you you kind of get this love-hate with motorcycles overall, especially when you're away from them for so long, you don't know if getting back into it is going to be good. So kind of had it in my head that I'm just going to be a street rider. So. I uh, took my Three Knees Down channel, which had all my videos and experiences from the mopeds and the bikes and building and stuff, and try to go towards um, uh, just general motorcycle riding, motorcycle vlogging. Um, at the start of 2020, right on New Year's Eve, I decided to do something really dumb, and I had crashed on the street and uh, didn't get super injured, but it was enough where I was in the bed for a while. So I took that time to really think about, well, what am I doing with, with myself in terms of motorcycles? So decided, all right, I'm going to take this CR250 that I had, 
Um, you can check out that build online and see where that was going. Um, it was originally a supermoto that I made, but then I was like, I want to race that. I'm going to get back into racing full time and see what I could do with it. And I started building it up, started racing the R3 again, and eventually I was you know, winning every race um, on the R3. And the bike was all pretty much stock. It just had a pipe, uh, ECU kit, and tires. My fiance said, hey, you're, you're winning a lot. You've always wanted to try and get in a professional level. Why don't we go towards that for 2020 and 2021? But if I was going to go faster and if I was going to build more race craft, I needed to go up the next step, try and get on a 600 and learn from there. Because staying on the R3 and winning all the time, it's great, but it's not it's not where I wanted to be. It's not how you learn. So I had to push myself past those limits. Uh, when I had gotten the Ninja, it was around April of 2021. And I did a few races with it just to kind of, races at Chuckwalla just to kind of get a feel for it. And I was really uncomfortable with it. So uh, we decided since CVMA only runs during the winter time and it was already the end of the season, we're going to take the bike to the East Coast and just do some races at CCS in New Jersey Motorsports Park. Um, the community there I had already known from racing the, on the mopeds and a lot of those guys, uh, mostly young uh, men and women uh, around teenage years, they're now racing in Moto America um, in the Junior Cup. Uh, one of them, Brandon Posh, is racing internationally and another one, Anthony Maziato, is uh, racing in Moto America in Formula Twins. So really being around those kinds of guys and those people back in New Jersey where I originally kind of started racing uh, more seriously was good for me uh, on the 600. So I can sort of see my progression, see where I'm at and what my baseline was. Um, and I did fairly okay uh, out there, but I still needed to do more. And now I'm just in the mindset of I'm going to go through a full season of CVMA, get as many points as I can. Um, I have two years to do it for a Motor America license. And uh, from there, they'll be able to see if I'm qualified or not uh, to race in Motor America. So Motor America has different classes of racing uh, everywhere from uh, Twins Cup to Junior Cup, um, 600cc Super Sport, uh, Stock 1000, and uh, Superbike. They also have been experimenting with uh, this uh, Baggers class or American Twins. I'm not really sure what it, what it is or what it's called, but uh, if you like Harleys and stuff, there's definitely a place for you to go and race. And their licensing is much more lenient to be able to jump in and get a license in Moto America to race those kinds of bikes. If you're interested in racing in general, there's so many different levels, so many different ways you can just get on track on the bike. You can start how I did with Mini GP on a small bike. It doesn't have to be a moped, it could be like a, a dirt bike turned into a supermoto, and you just, you know, race around on track uh, on a small league uh, on a go kart track. Um, none of those things really matter if you're trying to get to a professional level in terms of points and stuff. So, to get qualified for Moto America, you would need to uh, start at a club. Um, Chuck Walla Valley uh, Motorcycle Association does that CVMA. Uh, CRA, there's two of them, one in Central, one in California. Uh, AFM, up, uh, that would be upstate California. CCS is mostly East Coast. And where is kind of like all around. And there's other little leagues. So. You can check out Motor America's website and see what's applicable. Uh, generally, when you start in a club, you're going to get your racing license, go to their uh, school, so that way they make sure you're okay to race on track. And you're going to start as an amateur. And depending on the club rules, 
Uh, you might need 100 points, you might need 50 points, you might need 200 points. But throughout the season of one full set of races, you know, from how many months you did, how many races you went to, you'll get points. And those points may bump you up. If you aren't good enough, you stay as an amateur. So right now I have an expert license with CVMA because I made enough points at CVMA to jump from amateur to expert. So from there, looking at the requirements for Moto America for 600 Super Sport, which is the class I want to race at in Moto America, I have my bike set up for those rules in Moto America and for the rules for the club so I can still qualify to race there. Um, and I need to do a full season every single race as much as I can, even if I don't finish the race, it still counts and get at least, uh, I believe it's either 100 or 200 points for a full season uh, with the bike, my bike, in the classes that qualify for those, uh, for that license in Moto America. I have two years to do that and that's really what's what kind of will hold up someone if they're trying to get to that that point is getting from getting your expert license to getting enough points and maybe even some qualifications in between there you know schooling other races uh, outside of the clubs that you go to i can go to cvma but i could also go to cra i could also go to ccs all of that just adds to my resume and will make me a more attractive rider to race at Moto America. You don't need the latest Yamaha R1 uh, with every single possible part. There's professional racers who are running close to lap record on fully stock uh, motorcycles with just racing tires. So you, you really don't need the best of the best uh, to be able to compete here. Just get a bike, get something within your budget, be realistic about uh, what you're going to do and how you're going to progress, and spend more money on yourself and your gear and your training and not so much on the motorcycle. Sure, so most sponsorships come in the form of contingency and what a contingency is is uh, you it depends on the club it depends on the uh, manufacturer who, who you're trying to get a sponsorship from but uh, at a club sometimes there may be uh, let's say Dunlop for example the tire company they'll say hey you buy a set of tires from us and if you get first, second, or third, we'll give you a gift certificate for around $300. You know, something like that. That's a contingency. They expect you to get within the top three or podium with maybe a sticker on your motorcycle running their uh, product. So you can look for contingencies at, um, uh, at your local club. Uh, you can also check out some manufacturers' websites uh, they have sponsorship time periods. Uh, for example, Woodcraft has their sponsorship request period from October 1st to around February. Um, so you can send them a resume, say, hey, I'm Victor Pagan. I dream of being a Motor America racer. These are my credentials. This is what I've done in the past. And this is what I'm looking to do. This is how I can promote you. So sending them a resume like that, saying what clubs you're part of. <laughs> saying what clubs you're part of really uh, goes a long way into uh, getting a sponsorship in that sense. Um, and at the end of the day, there may be, you, you may have to start off with being a privateer. All the money and funding is going to come from you. So until you can get sort of um, a trust and experience and things that you can give to a manufacturer or a product, um, they may not look at you until that point. A lot of different racers and riders in general have their own ways of training. Um, at a top level, you're basically on the bike as much as you can be or on a bike as much as you can be. 
um, just to practice something. Uh, for me personally, since I travel so much and uh, I don't really have a home base per se, I tend to train physically uh, at the gym, you know, just your normal uh, training at the gym. I also do bouldering specifically to target my core and upper body strength um, for riding and then on my off days of bouldering, I, I do a lot of different leg exercises, um, stretching, just to keep myself nimble. Um, it's pretty important, and I'm fortunate to have a good physique uh, in general, just due to genes, but uh, I try to maintain a healthy diet overall. Um, you know, it's if you're just doing track days or starting racing, you don't realize how much water you're consuming until the end of the day, um, how much your body is going to be starved of protein and nutrients. So just maintaining a lot of that um, ability to intake as much uh, healthy food as you can um, is pretty important for me um, in terms of on season and off season. If I'm not on the track, and I'm at home or something, I'll do research. And I'll try to see what other motorcycle racers are doing, um, try to study other people's techniques, uh, understand the why. Not necessarily copy, but understand why they may be doing something in a certain situation. And that's important uh, distinction to make. Uh, you don't want to just, you know, do uh, elbow drag in every corner because every motorcycle racer is doing that. There's reasons why you may or may not do that. Um, there's reasons why you may or may not uh, use more brake or less brake, so things like that. Um, Ken Hill has an amazing podcast on SoundCloud and on YouTube, so there's a lot of things that I reference from him. Um, YCRS, the schooling, is starting their own sort of video series, so I would recommend someone who has a little bit of money to do that. If you're already racing, um, and you have video footage of that, there's lots of different coaches that will do video review. So you can pay someone to check out reviews uh, for you to help with your own technique. Just in general, for me, I, I tend to uh, look for a coach if I can, um, if, especially if I'm at a different track. You know, find someone who knows the track well, who's a coach, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a racer, but someone that I can just bounce ideas off of and have them follow me and see what I'm doing just to make sure I'm constantly in good form and in good shape. Okay. Something that helped me for sure while I was doing training and while I'm racing is really just speaking it out. Um, I believe Valentino Rossi also does this. He will uh, say, hey, you know, just turn, eyes up, next corner, this, that, or the other thing. Whatever he needs to do to get himself focused while he's on track, he's going to say it aloud to himself. And I've been experimenting with that um, on my own, even writing up on this canyon. I'll just say, hey, body off, you know, look through the corner, prepare my 5% of brake to start to load my tires and just get ready and set up for the turn. In the middle of the turn, eyes up, look past the turn, look where my exit is, throttle, go. Essentially the risk of riding a motorcycle is, you know, the, the imminent fear of getting injured, um, possibly even death. And this may just be, you know, a, a macho thing, but I don't even take it as a macho thing. It's, it's just to get the adrenaline rush, um, knowing that I'm in control, right? I'm not taking this risk recklessly. So on the track, I can go as fast as I can, uh, as much as I can, within very, very fine margins next to other professional racers and other experienced riders. So that's really what drives me, being able to come out on top over someone else um, while going in full lean into the corner at over 100 miles an hour. That's, that risk is really what gets me going.
If you really have any questions, feel free to let me know um, uh, through the channel. Kind of want to leave letting people know that it's it's okay to go get on a bike get out there and ride there's should be nothing holding you back to try racing i know there's a lot of guys out there who are like oh i would like to race but i don't think i'm good enough I, i'm too old so i'm out of shape or whatever those are all excuses um really just get a bike get out there if you're confused on something because some of the the clubs and information can be uh kind of daunting and there's a lot of information you know just feel free to to shout out hit me up um hit up wizard and uh you know we'll we'll get we'll get you sorted out um there's definitely no reason why you shouldn't be able to get out on track if that's what you're thinking